I've come to Langton's today and it's a model example of a thriving antiques emporium. There's a whole world of collectibles here. Lots of rooms in this little house. Possibly a room in your house might contain a hidden gem. It's worth having a look. How long does it take for a child's toy to become collectible? Some of these aren't very old at all. Some I remember from my childhood. Some things as new as this I remember buying for my own children. Have a good look at home and see if you've got an original toy in its original packaging and you could make yourself a couple of hundred pounds. Quite impressive. Now there's three floors to go at here. That's an awful lot of antiques and collectibles. How are our red and yellow team going to fare? They really need an eye for detail. So it's not Clarus Cliff, in fact we're looking at the work of Lorna Bailey. But look at this, 20% off. Now the red team or the yellow team could have a look in this glass cupboard and find themselves a bargain, perhaps something that might make a lot of money or not. I just walked past this shelf of bric-a-brac and spotted this, it's a Dalton. Look at the delicate flower pattern, it's really pretty and it's £10.50. It has a matching saucer. If they can get this for £5, they could make £25 at auction. Not bad for a day's work. Here I am with resident antiques expert Ian. Now Ian, let's say I've got £50 in my back pocket. I want to find a bargain that's going to make a lot of money in auction. A point in question, I mean, we've just had this watch come in. He wanted £2, which I give him. I then go and spend a, a £1, £1.50 on a battery. If it works, we're on to a winner because we're looking at 80 to 100 pounds. Wonderful, and is that the receipt you've got in the we've, box? We've, got, we've backed it with the paperwork, we've got the receipt and the actual instructions. Fantastic. So, it's a race between the red team and the yellow team. Only one can be Earl Grey, the other will be the biscuit that gets dunked. Cheers. <laughs>